Now you will hear part four again. Speaker one. When my husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's a few years ago, I was devastated. I couldn't face the fact that we would possibly not grow old together. Then I saw the actor Michael J. Fox on TV. He's younger than my husband and has had to live with the same debilitating disease for many years now. What impressed me was his unwavering optimism and determination not to let it take over his life. I cried a lot that day, but it was for the last time. I knew in my heart we had to make the most of the days we have together and celebrate all the good things about our life, rather than mourn a future loss. Speaker 2 Living in the inner city when I was 17, I was hanging out with the wrong crowd and had fallen into seriously bad habits. My dad would have none of it, and when he saw I wasn't going to straighten up, he packed me off to my uncle who owned a farm in the north. During the first few weeks, I had the worst time of my life, and I would have managed to run away if he hadn't proved far cleverer than I was. With time, I came to respect him for being the most genuine, caring, kind person I'd ever met. He taught me to respect myself and nature and how to live in harmony with it. Honestly, but for him, I might not be standing in front of you now. Speaker 3 From what I once read in an article, we usually put our parents up on a pedestal when we're kids, only to bring them crashing down as teenagers. But for me, that was never the case. We lost my dad when I was two and my mum had to raise us, that is, my two brothers, two sisters and myself, all on her own. She was the most hard-working person I've ever known, a strong, unbreakable spirit, never complaining, never indulging in self-pity. I grew up to be a fighter, as independent and responsible as she was. I just hope I'm able to teach my kids a fraction of what she taught me. Speaker 4 It might sound corny, as, especially when she first became a success, the rags-to-riches story of J.K. Rowling was sprawled all over the papers and magazines. But for me, it's not just that. Don't get me wrong, I do admire how she rose from being a destitute single mother who had to resort to writing her novel in cafes because she couldn't afford heating her flat to being one of the most celebrated novelists of our time. But what I find absolutely fascinating is how she persisted after countless agents and publishers turned down her work. She's a person who really believed in herself and her talent, and I hope that I can be the same when it comes to dealing with the music industry. Speaker 5 I sometimes quote some obscure philosopher when I want to impress at parties, but the two people who single-handedly stop me from despairing of the human race are Tanya and Jeremy, whom I may add I've known since nursery school. My first recollection of them, actually, is the two of them feeding their lunch to the birds on a day it had snowed, because they feared the poor creatures wouldn't be able to fend for themselves. Thirty years later, they run one of the most ambitious food bank projects, collecting unwanted food from restaurants and supermarkets to distribute to the homeless or young families in need. Their unflinching dedication and commitment have somehow rounded the sharp edges of the worldview of such a dyed-in-the-wool cynic as I think myself to be. Now, up to now, you have, uh, you should have finished everything.